Come on. Oh, that battery should not be dead. Everything's broke on the farm today, guys. Come along as we take care of a few little jobs that need to be done. And we fire the skid loader up and we get started prepping for concrete. Awesome time today. Lots of cool tools too. <laughs> hey there folks, this is Josh Stony Ridge Farmer. Welcome back to another fun day here on the Stony Ridge Farm. Today is about maintenance. It's about maintenance and issues and flat tires and dead batteries. It's winter time. And let me tell you, if you want it to get cold, let me know. I'll shave my beard off again and it's guaranteed to drop to five degrees. <laughs> we had a frosty, frosty week this past week and a lot of tires went down on machines and we've got some tires off the rim. So we'll show you guys what we do to help seal that tire back to the rim. We've got quite a bit of work to do and not a lot of daylight to do it in. But the first thing we've got to address is we got to jump off the candy cane F-150 right here. It is loaded down with boxes that I need to take and have recycled and the battery's dead on that. So we'll get that started first. We'll pull that on up out of the way. We've got the Gale skid steer over here that's low of fluid. We've got, we'll just walk you around, the little TTYM tractor. Both front tires are flat. The John Deere tractor, the right front tire is flat and the big T tractor, the the battery got really, really cold and I forgot to turn off the battery on off switch. So we got to jump it off. We got a jump box that'll jump a monster tractor like that. Think you guys will like it and we'll show you a cool power solution that I have here in the mega shop since we're still waiting on the power company to bring us a transformer to get power to this shop. Ugh, so frustrating. Let's have some fun. Woo! I ain't afraid of work. I ain't afraid of play. I ain't afraid to get the job done and do it my own damn way. I ain't afraid of life times like this. If you mess with my freedom, I'll tell you just what you can kiss. So the first tractor we've got to work on is Little T. This is the Little TYM T254 tractor, and I'm sure the battery's good to go on it. It's a small little Yanmar 25 horsepower diesel engine, and this is the ticket for getting our tire back on the rim. I don't know what I ran over, but I must have ran over a pack of nails or something. Uh, I've got to inspect these tires, so we'll go ahead and raise this up, and it's a pretty cool little trick I'll show you to get the tires up off the ground, and you can do this with any tractor with a loader, but maybe you've never thought of it. Here we go. Contact. Oh, we better run the glow plugs. It's been cold. Contact. Always great running tractor. And we're going to bring up the pallet forks here. Both front tires on this machine are flat, what we call flat as a flitter here in North Carolina. <laughs> We're going to stab our forks into the ground and raise up the front of the tractor. There we go. Just that simple. Now we want to be aware that the tractor is dangerous in this position, so don't get up underneath anything like this. But we can freely spin our tire and we can inspect and make sure we don't have a nail that's just blatantly obvious. So let's do that first and then we'll throw some air in this critter. Just inspecting the tire, I may have to take this and uh, put a little soapy water on it too. I don't know why, but it keeps breaking the seal on the rim right here. It's probably because I let somebody borrow my tractor and they rode it on the rim, which is not cool. Over here on the back of the Honda, we've got our little DeWalt pancake compressor. This thing is awesome. I'll post a link to it in the video description. That is a DeWalt pancake compressor and got a nice long hose on here. So this is just soapy water. This is just very, very simple soapy water that I use to apply a sticker to the uh, Yoda corn, the Toyota pickup. And here's what I'm going to do. We're going to go right around the outside edge of this rim because we can tell, I mean, it'll easily come off that rim, just like so. This one isn't really bad. We're gonna hit the backside too. Turn that wheel, sharp as she'll go. Go right in here on the backside. It's slightly off the rim back here. Same thing, rotate, squirt, rotate. Not a big deal. This one is totally off the rim. 
valve cap off. There we go. See the bubbles right there coming around the outside. I can hear it hissing. It needs to just pop back on the rim. Look at them bubbling out. Got to be careful. You don't want to blow a tire up too far and cause problems. Put about 20 PSI in there. Okay. No more bubbling, hopefully. We'll keep an eye on this. We'll take our soapy water. We're actually going to spray a little soapy water on here. Let's see if we can find where our leak might be if we've got a leak in the tread. I don't see anything. We should immediately start seeing bubbles. Soapy water is a good thing to have in your shop for this kind of thing. Just Dawn dish detergent. There we go. Okay. I think we just broke the seal on the outside here. I don't see any bubbles or any issues whatsoever. Onward and upward. Over to the other side we go. Now you can see we are totally off the rim right here, guys. Totally. All right. We're going to have to do a little juice. Throw the juice on it. Same thing. It's not really off on the back side. We want to make sure we're totally covered. Guys, this is a reason you can't just loan out your equipment. When you loan something like this and it comes back with two flat tires and you start scratching your head, well, the guy drove it back on two flat tires. Ugh. We got to get this tire up onto that rim. So just pulling it right there should do it. A little huggy hug, a little tug and hug, and come on, baby, give me some air. All right, it's gonna be a hassle. I think we can do it though, without specialized tools. <laughs> come on, baby, find that sweet spot. Let's get a little more go go juice in there. Sing to me, girl. Come on. Man. You don't want to go on there, do you, girl? Come on, baby. You don't get this seated just right. There it goes. <laughs> Whew, I was getting worried there. <laughs> All right, we're running out of air in our compressor. That's okay. Go ahead and put as much air as we can in here and we'll recharge. Let's go show you the cool power solution inside the shop. Man, this little Honda is so nice and quiet. We're just gonna plug this critter in and watch and you aren't gonna believe what's powering this. Here we go. <laughs> Massey Ferguson hood, it's broke down. This is my charging station right here. This is called a Zendur, Zendur power station right here, and this is what I'm using. Uh, right now that's pulling 1174 watts, and it's plugged right in there. This is a battery bank, a gigantic battery bank. That's the satellite battery right there, and this is called the Super Base V. This is a monster of a power source. And this is what I'm having to use until I can get power into the mega shop. So using it for charging batteries, running compressors, running the lift, everything. It'll run everything in this shop, which is really awesome. That is a Zendur Super Base V with an extra battery. I'll post a link down the video description for you. That thing is an awesome backup battery bank for backup power and primary power 
here in this gigantic shop while our compressor is filling up right there. <laughs> I'm gonna go ahead and squirt some soapy water on this tire and see if I can find the leak. So let's just juice her up real quick here. Uh-oh, we've, we've shank, Captain. Let's fire it up. There we go. Any bubbles? I think it, <laughs> the problem is loaning the tractor. That's what the problem is. We just drove on the rim and broke that seal. Hopefully the soapy water will fix that totally. I see no nail or screw or anything, nothing bubbling. Tire's good. Never fear, the green one's next. Good deal. Where did the little valve cap go? There it is. Tractor problem number one solved. <laughs> We're gonna need this tractor because we've gotta go harvest a log that fell out on the public highway and it's a nice pine log. We're not gonna let that thing get away from us. We're gonna make some two by fours with it. So let's fire this critter up. There we go. Honestly guys, this little tractor and the skid loader are probably the most used machines for their versatility and lightweight. Low gear, high gear. There we go. Now we're gonna take red paint and rescue green paint. <laughs> This is a jump box. We're gonna need that in a second. Set this down and get our air hose out. This tire's still on the rim and I have my suspicions about where it's leaking. I've had plugs and patches put in this tire. This tractor has about a thousand hours. Here goes. About four pounds. <laughs> That's about 20. Okay, off we go. We'll lose our valve cap. That thing's gold right there. So somewhere there's a split right here in this tire. Let's just check that split. Nothing coming out of there. There's a plug slash patch on uh, one part of this tire. So we'll show you that once we get the tractor started. Got to fire this critter up and do the same thing that we just did with the little TYM, except for we're just gonna prop it up on the lane shark. So we'll raise this up, point it down, and lift the front end of this up, spin that tire around and see if we can spot where the leak is. Now, the biggest question is, will it start? I don't think it will. I'm about 99.9% .9 sure it will not. Wet butt, no wet butt, please. Woo, that's cold. Here we go. Yeah, yeah, she's, she's not a happy camper. So we pull, uh, raise her up. This battery is nearly brand new and it's a Duralast battery and I'm not happy with it at all. Again, this is a jump box, we'll turn it on. We have 80% power, it's got a little screen on there. It's from Gulu and I'll post a link to this thing too. This is something I've used and I haven't used it on a tractor yet. So it's supposed to be able to start a diesel, a big machine. So this is gonna be the tell the tail. So red on the, the hot side or positive and black to the negative. The cord is a little bit short, but I think we'll be okay. That's the big question. Will this start a diesel tractor? Contact, baby. Glow plugs. Contact. Come on. 
Uh, maybe the glow plugs need to go for a little bit longer. That battery should not be dead. Okay, glow plug's good. There we go. Woohoo! <laughs> It'll start a tractor. That's all I need to know. Did it melt it? <laughs> All right, Stony Ridge Farmer approved. We dropped her to 68% from 80%. But the last one of these I had and I tried to jump a tractor, it melted it, it totally melted it down. Very impressed. Gulu. Okay, we're gonna let this critter run for a minute. I'm gonna go ahead and raise up and we'll check that tire. Guys, I don't use this John Deere very much anymore. It's a purpose-built machine. At this point, it's basically only used as a backhoe and for that Lane Shark front brush cutter mower. That thing is awesome. Up we go. Off the ground. Very nice. The tractor in. It's in park right now. Is it in four-wheel drive? Nope. <laughs> Tire should spin freely. Oh, she's a little tighter than that other one. Uh, big tractor, big dirt, bigger tire. Roll it around. This is my suspicion. There's one there. Check that guy. It's a very slow leak. I don't even see my plugs anymore. We must have pulled those out when we patched the tire. Well, let's just soak her on down. It's probably something that I can't see. got ourselves a Tootsie Roll situation here, guys. <laughs> the world may never know where that tire's leaking, but it does have a slow leak, so all good. No worries. So that handles all of our flat tires for the day. Now, I'm gonna let this tractor sit here and idle, charge up that battery. I'll actually vary the RPMs just a little bit. Let the tractor run a little bit because it hasn't been ran in probably three months aside from moving out from the shop. The next machine we've got to work on and let's just go check it. It may start right up. I haven't started this tractor in about a month. This is the Woods Batwing Mower. I told you guys a lot of maintenance today. The Woods BW 15.5. This is Big T, the TYMT 1104. 110 horsepower, beast of a tractor. Okay, this may fire right up, but my suspicion is we're gonna be in a pinch we're gonna need to jump it off okay glow plugs are running glow plugs off contact oh baby 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 no more jumpy <laughs> right on man so you'll see the video coming soon the final mow and we're gonna hook up to the drag harrow which is over here and we're gonna start dragging pastures dragging that manure out feeding the land it's gonna be awesome great time this is George my truck other truck <laughs> other truck <laughs> too many trucks okay so let's get the candy cane fired up and let it run in charge all we're gonna do is just burn diesel for a little bit and burn a little bit of gas and then we're gonna check on the skid loader after that this is the uh, pioneer 1000-6 from 2023. This is a loaner, it's not mine. Really cool machine. Transmission shifts like a car. Reverse, neutral, high, low. Going in reverse, reverse lights up. Just picked this up from my neighbor, very good friend. Got a very good deal on it. Beautiful 1995 Ford F-150 5.0 with cat tracks all over it. <laughs> Just for giggles, let's try it one more time. See what she does. Here it goes. Oh yeah, that's a bad battery. Is that a Duralast also? Let's see, another bad Duralast. This one's from 2018. It's the, it's the Duralast Gold, it should be good to go. We're gonna go get replacements for these batteries. Okay, red to red, black to black. 
So negative, negative, positive, positive. 68%, it says ready. Come on, little Gulu, you can do it. Contact. Dude. <laughs> Sixty-seven percent. So we've successfully jumped off three vehicles because I had to jump this off uh, the other day. So that's three vehicles, and this thing only had about eighty percent charge on it when we started today. Awesome. Let this guy run for a little bit too. <laughs> okay, next problem we got to address is right in here. I've been hooking and unhooking equipment to this Gale skid steer. Let's just pop that open. And we've got to run our chipper. This is the MX9900SS chipper from Woodmax. Awesome, awesome piece of equipment. I've got the tooth bucket on here for right now. However, if we go over here and we take a close look, go ahead and open this critter up. The oil is not even registering on the sight glass. This is where we fill our hydraulic oil. We'll pop that guy up, open this, get ourselves a funnel, and we're gonna get her up into the sight glass. This takes a special kind of hydraulic fluid, so we're just gonna pour it into a transfer jug. If you don't have one of these on your farm or your property, you ain't living right. This is a good oil transfer jug. Really, really like it. Micro dust all around the top of this. We'll make sure we wipe it clean away from our tank. We're still gonna have to get a funnel. That's an oddball hydraulic oil filler. Approximately 11 gallons. So if we're a couple gallons low in this cold weather, it's gonna take a minute. So we took about two gallons to get, yeah, three quarters of the way up. And the fluid looks, yeah, to me, a little milky, which means it might have a little bit of condensation in the tank. So she's due for a service. All right, we're gonna go ahead and fire up the gale and then we're gonna take the little tractor and we're gonna get up some tin that's sitting beside the building. It's extra metal that was left over from putting up the mega shop and I didn't let him take it away. Definitely gonna use that for a future chicken coop project. That <laughs> was a job for that little tractor, man. <laughs> it was a little bit hairy. I had a pucker factor of 16 on that one. Uh, so what we've got going on here on this side of the building this is where the butcher shop is going to be uh, and where we can pull that small tractor in there, that little TYM tractor in with whatever animal we're butchering and hang it on the, uh, over the butcher block. So I guess over the butcher block, there'll be a rail system in there in other words. So we've got to pour a sidewalk all the way around the outside edge of this building, all the way to this door. There will be a concrete pad right here and there will be a 24 by 24 outdoor kitchen area and processing area right here. Uh, timber frame, we're also gonna do a timber frame front porch. You can stay tuned for that video if you're not subscribed already. The problem we're having is that this, as you can tell, is really, really mucky and muddy. So I've gotta get in here with the Gale Skid Steer and I've gotta kinda of rake this back just a little bit. I'm gonna take a little bit of the rock dust, I'm gonna spread it out in here and we're gonna take the teeth on the Gale and rake all that back fill in that little gully that's washed out and take care of business. I also, in the very near future, have to bury each one of these drain pipes for the gutters and the gutters on the front of the building need to be addressed also. So not only will we have a sidewalk right here beside the building, we'll have a big old front porch right here where all these tools are sitting a timber framed front porch. This will be the farm office. This will be where you come to buy beef and I'll have an apron, a 10 foot apron that comes off the front of this building so you can pull vehicles on there and park them. 10 foot for now, 20 feet later. We're also gonna do an addition to this building. I, I swore 112 by 50 was gonna be big enough, but we need outdoor storage for lumber, for the sawmill and for tractors. So let's hop on the gale and rake out a little bit of this rock dust. Rock dust or screenings is what this is. 
And it's basically what's washed off of clean stone. Clean stone meaning this. Cool? Take a little bit of that. It works great for filling in areas and it compacts really well, which will help our concrete pad. Can't do that today, can't finish it. Uh, let me show you why. I did not anticipate this, but it has been really, really cold. It's, ah, man, it's warmed up pretty good today, but that's solid. That's frozen solid. These big chunks right here, they're not boulders, they're just big chunks of frozen rock dust. It's supposed to be 60 degrees later this week, so we're gonna have to come back and address this. I just made a big mess, couldn't do anything. Couldn't back drag it, couldn't smooth it out. Bummer. Mummer, man. <laughs> this will all be smoothed out. This will all look absolutely gorgeous. Again, a 24 by 24 outdoor kitchen area for processing chickens and stuff like that. Beautiful spot right here, overlooking the entire farm. Cannot wait. And that's where a lot of our Food Friday videos will be shot. So stay tuned for a future vid. We're gonna be out here rescuing a pine tree that just fell off the side of the road. We had a huge storm. I've got trees down on the fences, trees down everywhere, and we're gonna make lumber out of them. So we'll see you guys on Sawmill Sundays on the Stony Ridge Farm. All right, woo! Come on down to the Stony Ridge. Bring your wife and bring your kids. We're living life here in Sweden. That's the way it's supposed to be, Stony Ridge. Woo! A lot of tires. Is an awesome backup battery. Yeah. So cool. <laughs> cool. <laughs> I like to make a big mess when I do stuff. <laughs> <laughs>